set me free. Therefore, I declare that I am made free by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of my testimony. Thank you, Lord, for total freedom and victory in my life in Jesus' name. Glory to Jesus. Lift your hands this morning and just give all praise. Hallelujah. Thank him. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Father. Open your mouth. Say something wonderful to the Lord this morning. Say something wonderful to the Lord this morning. Say something wonderful to the Lord this morning. Give him praise and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. I worship your holy name. Oh, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, and I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul. Father, we thank you this morning, for you are the God of all flesh. We give you praise. We thank you. We thank you, wonderful spirit of the living God. We welcome you in our midst today. We appreciate you. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord, for the impact of your spirit in our midst. We give you praise and glory. Thank you, Father God, for everyone that is watching online. We appreciate you because your word is coming and is going to stir their word. Thank you, Father, for sending your word this morning. And your word brings healing to us. Father, we are not counting on the eloquence of man's wisdom, on the power of oratory, but we are depending upon you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the breaker anointing that is in your word. Thank you, Father God. We give you glory and praise. Wherever you are this morning, can you open your mouth 
if you can pray in tongues and speak in the spirit i want you to open your mouth pray in the holy ghost this morning Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to your name. Mondo Zopra Bata Zipta Babu Shaka Pama Kazata Balabaza. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, O God. Put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Choir, thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. Somebody said the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Higher than all the name. King of all kings. No other name like his. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord for the name of Jesus. God has given you that name. As your portion. As your inheritance. As your possession. That name that you can use at any time. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Say, Father, thank you for the name of Jesus. You know, it's, it's very important for you as a child of God to know what is yours. What God has given to you. What God has made available to you. It's very, very vital. A lot of people don't know what is theirs in Christ. Say you must know your inheritance as a child of God. What belongs to you. The name of Jesus has been given to you as a child of God. And also healing has been given to you. Healing has been made available to you in Christ. So this morning, you need to know how to take possession of your healing. If something has been given to you, you must know how to take a hold of it. Jesus said, come to me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, learn of me. So Christianity involves a lot of learning, learning, learning. We keep learning, we keep learning. It's very important. Because you know, the more you learn... The more you know, and the more you know, the more you enjoy freedom. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, discoveries will lead to recoveries. When you discover, you recover. And, you know, when you recover, you have deliveries. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. So, it's always exciting to be, you know, in God's presence learning his word knowing his word assimilating truth into our spirit to know what is ours in christ healing belongs to you as a child of god and the matter of healing is very important because no matter how great your dreams are no matter how um, glamorous the things you desire to do in your life if your body says no then there's nothing you can do. You can have big dreams. 
You can have great aspirations. You can have big goals. You can have great desires for yourself. You can say, I want to be this and I want to be that and I want to accomplish this and that. But if you are sick, you can't do any of those things. If you go to the hospital right now and you talk to anybody that is sick, they will tell you that they will give anything in this world to be healthy. Including whatever they have in their bank account. So what's the use of it? I remember standing by the bedside many years ago. Many, many years ago. This must be over 30 years ago. Standing by the bedside of a man who was dying. A rich man. Very wealthy. And his wife was there. And I was there. And the wife said money you are a disgrace money you are a disgrace so with all the money that we have what has it come to it has not helped out you never appreciate something until you lose it we need to value our health you are a three-legged stool and if one of the legs break down the other two cannot stand effectively you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a physical body. Your body is the house of your spirit. If your body breaks down, your spirit cannot continue. You see, death is the separation of the spirit from the body. When the body becomes sick through infirmity and is broken down, the spirit, the real man, the 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 real tenant, the occupier of the house, will say, I can't stay in this house anymore. This house is already broken down. He wants to stay, but he can't stay. So he moves out. That is what is called death. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. You will not be sick. Your amen can be better. I said you will not be sick. God promised us in his word, Job 36, 22. He said, if they obey me and serve me, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. That is the will of God. God wants you to spend your years in pleasure, not in pain. Pain is not glamorous. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so, I will share with you some scriptures this morning to let you know that healing is the will of God for you. Somebody say after me, say, healing is the will of God for me. All right? Health, divine health is God's will for you. Hallelujah. And you see, no matter how many times you've heard these scriptures, all right, you still need to hear them again and again and again and again and again until you become addicted to the truth. And this truth of the word of God becomes your world view. It becomes your pers um, perception and your perspective on life. It becomes what you truly, really believe. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. The Bible said, If thou wilt hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God, and will do what is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep his status. I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he led thee. I am the Lord that he led thee. Somebody say, He is the Lord that he led me. Psalms 107, verse 20 He sent his word and healed them and rescued them from their destructions. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22 My son, Attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. That word health there means medicine. The word of God is medicine to your flesh, medicine to your body. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. And then, Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. Jeremiah 30 17. 
God promised in his word. He said, for I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. God is a healer. He's a healer. He said, I'll restore health to you. He said, I'll heal you of your wounds. Said the Lord. Because they called thee an outcast. Saying, this is Zion whom no man seeks after. Glory to Jesus. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. He said, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as cows of the stall and i love this one in matthew chapter 8 verse 14 to 17 matthew chapter 8 verse 14 to 17 and when jesus was come into peter's house he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever and it touched her hand and the fever left her you know there was a time when fever used to kill people you see these days we don't think much of that you know you have fever you just take some coins but back in the days fever used to kill people and in the days of jesus they categorized fever into two lesser fever and greater fever and so Peter's mother-in-law was taken by a great fever. When you read this in the book of Luke, Luke being a doctor, all right, put it in the right perspective. She said what she was taken with a great fever. But Jesus came to the rescue. The Bible said he touched her hand and the fever left her. The Bible said, and she arose and ministered unto them. Oh, what a healing Jesus. He's the healing Jesus. The Bible said, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. He healed all that were sick. I want you to take note of that in your Bible. He healed all, not some, all that were sick. You see, Jesus is the multi-specialist. There is no sickness or infirmity that is beyond his ability. There is no sickness or infirmity that is beyond his specialty. Today, if you go to see a GP, he will refer you to a specialist if it's beyond him. But this physician does not make referrals. He is the final bus stop for every infirmity and for every affliction. Now, the Bible said he healed all that were sick. And in verse 17, Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, the Bible said that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Himself, himself, now that is something I'm going to be emphasizing in the course of this message. Himself took our infirmities. Himself. You see, when man fell in the Garden of Eden, the immediate fallout um, or consequence of man's fall was sickness. Sickness is the foul offspring of sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And sickness is an enemy. Oh, you need to see what sickness is doing today you know i i i wrote something in the um in the bulletin sickness is an enemy jesus is the healer and I, according to statistics they said one out of two people will die of heart attack one out of three people will get cancer one out of two people will get an autoimmune disease three out of four people will get a degenerative disease and heart disease is the number one killer of women. And the statistics go on and on. Satan has turned this world into an arena of pain and discomfort. And, you know, you need to know as a child of God how to take advantage of God's healing medicines for you. Thank God that Jesus said, I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullness until it overflows. 
How many of you can make bold to say in the Lord that till the day you finish your assignment on earth, you will not be sick? How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. Glory to Jesus. Can you say out loud, say in the name of Jesus, until I finish my assignment on earth and I'm face to face with Jesus, I will not be sick. You see, sometimes you say that, you know, um, there are diseases or sicknesses that come with old age. You say, you know, when you age, you have to be sick. Well, that could be a fact of science, but I want you to know that even medical science is at its infancy compared to the wisdom of God. Medical science is still at its infancy. In fact, all sciences are at their infancy compared to the great wisdom of God. Even though man has come a long way, we are still making discoveries, you understand, from God's six days of creation. Do you know that all the discoveries man has been making for all these thousands and thousands of years are discoveries of six days of creation? <laughs> what God made in six days has taken man tens and and thousands of years to discover. And we are still discovering. There are many things around us that will deal with any kind of sickness. God has put it there, but man has not discovered it yet. That's why I said that medical science is still at its infancy. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. So there is nothing like when you grow old, you have to get sick. No. That is man's philosophy. It is not a, a scriptural fact. Abraham was... 175 years old. Somebody get what I'm saying? Glory to Jesus. He was 175 years old when he died. And the Bible said he was strong. He was full of age. Alright? He was full of days. That was Abraham. And then, um, you look at Isaac. I think Isaac was 160 years when he died. And then you look at Moses. Moses. Moses was 120 years when he died. The Bible said his physical strength did not diminish. And his eyes did not grow dim. Even in these contemporary times, you have people who are growing, aging gracefully without sickness or disease. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very important. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I think out of the three patriarchs, only Jacob died sick. And even him, <laughs> he died, when, you know, he died, he died sick. And, um, you know, when he, when he was face to face with Pharaoh, Pharaoh looked at him and said, how old are you exactly? And then, you know, he went into a lot of story. Well, don't let us get into Jacob's case today. But you see, I'm trying to let you know that it's a myth to say that you have to be sick as you get old. Many of those things that you feel, and so they are telling you, it's because you are getting old. You have to reject it. You have to be aggressive and violent against sickness. Sickness is an enemy. Somebody say, I hate sickness with a passion. Come on, talk to me. Say, I hate sickness with a passion. So himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. He took them away. Glory to Jesus. And 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Jo James chapter 5. James chapter 5 verse 14 to 15. I'm giving you many scriptures about healing. So you read them. You meditate on them. You know them. It's very, very important. What you put into your spirit man will determine how healthy your body becomes. James 5, 14 to 15. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. 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 
I like that. The Lord shall raise him up. Because the Lord doesn't want him to be down on the bed of sickness. The Lord doesn't want him to be tied down. Sickness is a thief. Sickness is a robber. Sickness is an enemy. The Lord shall raise him up. The Lord shall raise him up. God is not in the business of putting people down. He's in the business of raising them up. He's not in the business of making people sick. He's in the business of raising them up. The Lord shall raise him up. The Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Told John verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. I wish above all things, above everything else, that you may prosper and be in health and be in health even as your soul prospers. It's only somebody that is in health that can do good things in life. It's only someone that is in hell that can get a degree. It's only somebody that is in hell that can run a business. It's only somebody that is in hell that can get married. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Glory to Jesus. Now, faith is the master key to receiving healing from God. Faith. Everybody say after me. Say faith is the master key to receive your healing from God. Say that again. Say faith is your master key. Is my master key to receive healing from God. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. The word of God says, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Faith is the master key to receiving healing from God. What exactly does God want you to believe? When we say believe, 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 have faith, have faith. Have faith in what? All right? Have faith in who? Of course, we know have faith in Jesus Christ. But as per what? Have faith that he took your infirmity. And bear your sickness. That is the faith that God wants you to have. Somebody say with me. Say Christ took my infirmity. And he bare my sickness. Isaiah 53 verse 4. Isaiah 53 verse 4. God wants you to have faith. That Christ took your infirmity. And he bare your sickness on the cross. Isaiah 53 verse 4. The Bible tells us, I want you to get that in your Bible and look at it. Look at the word. Look at the word. Very important. Look at the word. Look at the word. It says, surely he hath borne our griefs. Surely he hath, he hath, past tense, he hath, he hath. This has already taken place. Born our griefs and carried our sorrows so it's not on the board you need to look in your bibles surely he hath talking about jesus born our griefs the word born there means to take away or to carry away surely he hath born our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Hallelujah. Verse 5 said, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. You see that? Surely he hath borne our griefs. Now, the word grieve there means sickness. Literally, that's what it means. It means sickness. Now, surely means certainly, indeed, of a fact. He hath borne our griefs. He hath borne our griefs. You see, Jesus has borne your griefs. 
He said, and carried our sorrows. You understand? He carried your sorrows. He bore your griefs. And he carried your sorrows. He said, yet, we did esteem him stricken, speaking of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Somebody say, after me, say, surely. Say, surely. He has borne my griefs and carried my sorrows. Hallelujah. Now, you see, in that same passage where it says that Jesus bore your griefs and carried your sorrows is the same place where it tells us that Jesus carried our sins. All right? It's the same place where it says Jesus carried our sins. How many of us believe that Jesus carried our sins? You believe that? All right. Now, if you can believe that Jesus carried your sins on the cross, then you can believe that he carried your sickness. Because it's in the same place where he told me that he carried my sins. That's the same place where he said he, he carried my griefs. Now, I believe that God will not judge me for sin. Because Jesus took away my sin. And because I placed my faith in Jesus and I believe in what he did. So I believe that I, I will not be judged for my sins. And that is true for you. If you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and took away your sin, then you will not be judged for your sin. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, in the same way, if I believe that Jesus took my sickness, then I cannot be sick. Does that make sense? Because God put my sin on Jesus and at the same time he put my sickness and my disease on Jesus. And for that reason I can believe for my healing. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? I believe that God laid all my sins on Jesus. Therefore I don't have to bear my sins. Amen. How many people here know that they will not go to hell? How many people here know that they will not go to hell? How many people know they will not go to hell? Some of you are not sure. <laughs> you say, oh, uh, nobody can be very sure who will go to hell or not. No. You see, if you are not sure before you leave this earth, that is very dangerous. You can know that's the purpose of trusting in Jesus. When you trust in Jesus and you accept what he did on the cross of Calvary, your sins are forgiven and then you qualify to go to heaven. You don't qualify to go to heaven because you are a nice person. Because you are good. No. You qualify to go to heaven because you believe in what Jesus Christ did and accomplished for you on the cross. So because of what Jesus did on the cross, I know that I will not go to hell. I will go to heaven. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, in the same vein, Jesus took my sickness on the cross. He took it. And because he took it, then I don't have it. Hallelujah. God put all my sickness on Jesus. And God made him sick with my disease. Just like in 2 Corinthians 5.21, the Bible said, God made Jesus who knew no sin to become sin for me. That I may become the righteousness of God. Likewise, God made Jesus who knew no sickness to become sick with my disease. To become sick with my sickness so that I can be perfectly well. Look at this substitution, this glorious salvation. So Jesus became sin and I become righteous. Now Jesus becomes sick and I become well. It's a fact. So in Christ, all your sicknesses are taken away. It took your sins and it took your sicknesses. Because it took your sins, you are no longer a sinner. And in the same way, because it took your sicknesses, you are no longer sick. 
And Satan cannot put sickness on you because Jesus took your sicknesses. Now, somebody say after me, say, I cannot be sick. Say, Jesus took my sicknesses. All right. Now, everybody look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. I want you to look at these in your Bibles. And I want you to read these out loud. Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. This, as scriptures, you have to mark. You have to underline it. You have to memorize it. You have to know it. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 17. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Matthew 8, 17. It is very vital for you to get this message. No matter how, you know, great your dreams are, you can accomplish your dreams if you're sick. You're going to accomplish your dreams if your health breaks down. You need to align yourself with the great physician. Matthew 8, 17. Can we all read that out loud? One, two, go. Matthew 8, 17. Let's read it together. One, two, go. That it might be fulfilled. Yes. Yes. Himself. Somebody say himself. Took. My infirmities. And bear. My sicknesses. Say that again. Himself. Took. My infirmities. And bear. My sicknesses. Amen. How many of you got something in your hand? Give it to your neighbor. Say, take it. Give it, give. What do you have? What do you have in your hand? If you have a pen, give it to your neighbor. All right. Do you still have it? I said, do you still have it? Who has it now? Now imagine that that thing was your sickness. Jesus took it and so you don't have it anymore now somebody say after me say i cannot be sick jesus took my sickness let me say that again let me say that one more time say after me say i cannot be sick jesus took my sickness say that one more time say i cannot be sick jesus took my sickness very important very important it took it i believe that it took it so i don't have it i don't have it i can't be sick now listen to this symptoms is not sickness symptoms is not sickness many people are robbed of their healing in christ because they accept symptoms as sickness so now remember i was making some inferences so i said that jesus took your sin so that you can become righteous isn't it now when jesus took your sin you no longer have your sin because jesus took it now you can have temptation to sin temptation is not a sin temptation is an invitation to commit sin are you get what i'm saying and as long as you are in this body you are going to be tempted you are going to be tempted to do what is wrong now temptation in itself is not a sin when you yield to it that is when it becomes sin likewise you can have symptoms symptoms is not sickness somebody say how is that possible yeah that's what i'm telling you you may feel symptoms in your body that doesn't make you sick let god be true and let every man be a liar jesus took your sickness you can't be sick and you are not sick somebody say i'm not sick and i can't be sick because jesus took it now you can have symptoms and when you have symptoms you have to know how to deal with the symptoms are you get what i'm saying you may feel symptoms in your body 
if you agree with satan and you accept the symptoms as sickness then you will become sick jesus took your sickness on the cross and you are to become indoctrinated with that truth that he took your sickness it must be your sleeping thought your waking thought that you have been delivered from the dominion of satan you have been delivered from the dominion of sickness you have been delivered from being a regular of doctors and hospitals glory to god jesus took that he delivered me and set me free just like he delivered me from sin and i'm no longer a slave of a slave of sin likewise he delivered me from sickness and i'm no longer a slave of sickness now i can have symptoms all right um now look at this webster's dictionary i was looking these up um last night um you know Web webster's dictionary define a symptom as a subjective evidence of disease of physical disturbance a subjective evidence <laughs> something you feel in your body is subjective a subjective evidence you can't you you can't capitalize on it and say you're sick because of that tell the devil i can't be sick jesus took my sickness you see if you can believe that you cannot be a sinner because jesus took your sin you should be able to believe that you cannot be sick because he took your sickness you know some christians still go about and say you know all of us are sinners we are all sinners then why did jesus die if you still go about with that kind of thinking he died to deliver you from sin from being a slave of sin so don't go about saying you know everybody's sin everybody's sin no shut up <laughs> everybody don't sin <laughs> you understand what i'm talking about no everybody don't sin is everybody you know everybody no 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 everybody don't sin there are people who are living upright and living the righteous life in christ I, are you hearing what i'm saying glory to god jesus died so we will not be slaves of sin in the same vein jesus died so we will not be slaves of sickness is somebody hearing what i'm saying so what do you do when you feel symptoms there are three things you do when you feel symptoms in your body the first thing you do is research you research and in other words you ask questions where did the symptoms come from where are these symptoms coming from did i open a door to satan is it coming because i opened a door to satan did i open a door to devourers for instance god promised that he will rebuke the devourer for your sake you see in malachi chapter 3 so did i open a door to devourers is that why i have the symptoms did i fail to obey proverbs 4 23 now i needed to move very fast here because i want to give you a number of scriptures now proverbs 4 23 says guard your heart with all diligence is that what it says proverbs 4 is it 4 18 or 4 23 let me check 4 18 first okay 4 it should be 4 23 4 23 guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life so you want to find out did i do i have the symptoms because i failed to guard my heart you see the bible says you should guard your heart very important glory to god you guard your heart now did i give a place to satan ephesians 4 27 says neither give place to the devil did i give a place to the devil how did the symptoms come did i fail to give myself to the cleanser john 15 verse 3 the bible says the word of god is a cleanser he said you are clean by the word that i spoke to you see the word of god is a cleanser as you receive god's word it cleanses and purges you god's word is a detoxifier so if you fail to give yourself to that on a daily basis sickness can attack your body symptoms can come that's why every day as a child of god you must be in the word even if it's 15 minutes read the scriptures 
Sometimes read them out loud. It does something to you. Then another thing is this. How did the symptoms come? Did I get myself away from under spiritual covering? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, We should not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Why? Because you see, the church is a covering. You understand? So there's a covering of the body. Very important. Okay? Another thing is this. Where did the symptoms come from? Did I dishonor my parents? Because Ephesians chapter, chapter 6 verse 2 to 3 tells us. He said, honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you. And that your days may be long. So sometimes a person's days can be shortened if they fail to honor their father and their mother. Very important. A person can fall sick for that. Because God said the law. And as a matter of fact, the Bible said that is the first law with a promise. Honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you and that your days may be prolonged. Where did the symptoms come from? That's the first thing you want to do. Research. Where are the symptoms coming from? Did I violate my body? Did I violate my body? You know, I, I shared a story in the first service about... Um, about a man um, that was um, given a very a powerful a gift and you know ministry by God, but he, he you know he um, he was reckless with his body. You understand? Overworked. You understand? Will walk so hard, sleep so little. You know, drove the body to the extreme. And when he became sick, very sick, he had to go somewhere. Um, you know, on a retreat, and this, you know, had a very little heart by the riverside. And as he lived there, 25 year old boy, you know, he was about 25, but he was very gifted. I mean, within the short time that God called him, he, he accomplished a lot in China before communism, and this was in the 1930s. You know, he accomplished a lot, and then he said to himself. He said, God, is this my hand? Am I going to die like this? I've not even started my ministry. And as he began to reflect, something came to him. He said to himself, he said, God gave me a horse and he gave me a message. But I killed the horse before I could deliver the message. That's talking about his body. It was reckless. You understand? You know, I can give you examples and examples like that. Of that. Sometimes, you know, symptoms can come because you violate your body. You understand? Either you eat too much or you eat too little. Either you sleep too much or you sleep too little. You see, either extreme is bad. Are you getting what I'm saying? Very important. Did, was I reckless and indisciplined with my diet? Where are the symptoms coming from? Are you getting what I'm saying? There are some things that as a child of God, you should get off your diet completely. Get it off. Throw it out. You shouldn't even move near it at all. It's not good. Apart from the fact that it doesn't have health benefits, it has no food value. It has no food value. Did I fail to forgive someone? Because unforgiveness will open the door to symptoms in your body. Am I holding a grudge in my heart? You have to check. Research. That's what it means. Where are the symptoms coming from? Did, did the symptoms start after a dream that I had? Where did the symptoms come from? Sometimes, you know, sicknesses and symptoms can come after a dream, after a dream attack. Shall if you have a dream where in the dream somebody was feeding you food or somebody was having, you know, was violating you sexually, those things can create sicknesses and symptoms in the body. Is the sickness generational or inherited? Did I allow fear? Fear is a big door opener for symptoms. Another one is this. Did I dishonor the body of Christ? You see, the body of Christ, the church, all right, is really the body of Christ. And if you dishonor the body of Christ, it can open the door for sickness. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 30. Paul the apostle was talking to the Corinthians. And he said to them, this insensitivity in the way you treat the church or you treat the body of Christ is why many are weak, chronically ill, and some even dying. That's how he puts it in, in the Passion Translation. 
You can read that. First Corinthians 11.30. He said, many of you are weak. A lot of people in the church were weak. He said, chronically heal. And some are even dying. Why? Because they were insensitive to the body of Christ. You see, you need to be very careful as a child of God what you say about the church. You know, sometimes people just open their mouth and they just talk about the church. They just talk anyhow. You have, to be, you have to be careful because, you see, you are, you are damaging someone's body. And the person you are dealing with is going to react. It's going to react. The church is not just a gathering of people. The church is the body of Christ. If you dishonor the body of Christ, your whole body may be damaged. That's one of the reasons why people are sick, why symptoms come. Then another reason, why are the symptoms here? Did I commit sin? You know, John chapter 5 verse 14. There was a man that was sick for 38 years. And after Jesus healed him, Jesus met him, you know, in John 5 14. And Jesus said to him, wow, you are okay now. Everything is good. He said, but be careful. Make sure you don't go back to sin so that something worse will not happen to you. You see, so sin is a big door opener. Now, no wonder... I'm talking about what can bring symptoms on you as a child of God. Jesus took the sickness. He took it. And it's real that he took it. But symptoms can come. And you have to research why the symptoms are here. James chapter 5 verse 14 to 16. You may want to write this down. The Bible said, confess your faults, your slips, your misdeeds to one another james chapter 5 verse 14 he said confess your faults to one another especially in verse 16 verse 16 said confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much there are some sins that you have to confess to somebody else not just to god don't say oh i confess it to god no you may not be healed you have to, he said, confess it to another. Confess it to another. Why? Because the devil operates in secrecy. And there are some sins you cannot get rid of until it is spoken. Immediately you speak it and you confess it. You move the lead over it. And there is no hiding place for the devil anymore. Sometimes you can't be healed until you open up. So this is the meaning of research. All right, this is what it means when you say research. Now, the second thing that you need to do when you're dealing with symptoms is you need to rebuke the enemy. So after you've researched and you found out the possible causes of the sickness, of the symptoms, maybe this is what opened the door. Holy Spirit, help me to put my finger on it. Holy Spirit, help me to deal with it. You see, a child of God should not be sick just as a child of God should not be bound with sin. If you find a child of God that is bound with sin and is always confessing sin every time, today he said, God, forgive me because I stole. Uh, tomorrow, God, for, forgive me, I, I, I fornicated. Uh, God, forgive me, I told a lie. Then what's wrong with that child of God? What's wrong with him? Something is wrong. In the same way that a child of God should not be committing sin, a child of God should not be sick. Sickness is an enemy. It doesn't glorify God. We should not be sick. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Alright? So, Jesus dealt with the sickness. He took it away. And so you want to find out, why do I have the symptoms? After you've allowed God to help you to put your hand on what is responsible, then the next thing is you face the enemy and you rebuke him. You rebuke him. I don't know how many Christians really understand James 4, 7. I don't know how many Christians really understand James 4, 7. James 4, 7 says in the Passion Translation, so then surrender to god stand up to the devil and resist him and he will run away from you let me read that again so then surrender to god stand up to the devil and resist him and he will turn and run away from you wow 
Let me read that one more time. So then, surrender to God. Everybody say after me, say surrender to God. Stand up to the devil and resist him. And it will turn and run away from you. Surrender to God. Stand up to the devil. Stand up to the devil. Stand up to the devil. Resist him. Resist him. And he will turn. And he will run away from you. Resist the devil means oppose him. Withstand him. Set yourself against him. That's what it means to resist. Set yourself. Stand against the devil. Set yourself against him. You must see the symptoms as an enemy. Don't see symptoms as friend. Don't say, oh, you know, my flu has come again. My migraine has come again. My arthritis has come again. As long as you are calling it yours, it will not go. See symptoms as an enemy. See sickness as an enemy. There is nothing glamorous about sickness. There are many people who love their chains. There are many people who love the sickness. They love it. Some people actually like the sympathy they get from sickness. Oh, sorry. Oh, where, 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 where is it pain in you now? Is your leg? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. 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 And then they'll pick up their phone. Didn't you hear that I was sick? Eh? They didn't tell you. They didn't tell you. You, were, you didn't see it on Facebook. And you did not even send me a card. Eh? You didn't come to greet me. Didn't you hear that I was sick? Don't be a gentle man with sickness. Curse it in the name of Jesus. Somebody say after me, say, I curse every sickness in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, any situation you don't contend against has a right to remain. Curse it. Curse it. Stand against it in the name of Jesus. Set yourself against the symptoms. Set yourself against it. Don't be a gentleman. Don't be gentle with sickness. Don't be gentle with infirmity. Don't be gentle with it. Set yourself against it in the name of the Lord. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Very, very important. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And then the third thing that you have to do, restore. Restore. Restore means, now remember the first thing you have to do, is what research the second thing you have to do is what and then the third thing you have to do is restore restore means you want to bring your body back to where it ought to be and i'm telling you that is something you can do by the grace of god you can bring your body back to where it ought to be sickness is an enemy sickness is an enemy sickness is an enemy you know we wrote something here that there are a range of sicknesses that cause death a range of them that cause death and death is an enemy according to first corinthians 15 26 so restore means you try to bring your body back to where it ought to be so how do you restore you can restore through diet you understand what i'm talking about through diet watch what you're eating someone said that one quarter of what you eat enriches your body while the remaining three quarters enriches your doctor did you get the trick you didn't get the joke one quarter of what you eat helps your body the remaining three quarters that make you sick help your doctor it makes your doctor rich do you know every time you visit a doctor is getting richer Eh? When you go to the GP, does, do they make you sign something? Eh? Oh, you don't know your doctor is getting rich. Those of you who like the GP, I, 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 I'm coming, I'm, I'm at my GP. I, I, I went to see my, my GP, my, my, as if your GP is the Holy Spirit. I went to see my, my GP, my, my GP this, my GP that. Every time you go see him, the guy is getting rich. And he's getting rich because of three quarters of what you are eating. That means... If you try to restore your body by what you are eating, you can help yourself a lot. You can restore. 
there are many illnesses in the body, many diseases that can be reversed through diet. Reversed through diet. As a matter of fact, a wise man said, the doctors of the future will be those that cure their patients through food. That's what somebody said. Now, you know, um, Hippocrates is a Greek physician. Some of you may know him. They call him the father of medicine. He said this in 370 BC. He said, let food be thy medicine. What did he say? Let food be thy medicine. Very important. So you have to really find out most of the things you are eating. Which one is medicine? The Coke Zero, is it medicine? The Sprite, is it medicine? All the sugary stuff, is it medicine? That is damaging the body. Is it medicine? Is it worth it to pack all those things inside your body? The caffeine, is it medicine? Is it worth it to take your own hands and damage the body that God gave to you? I want you to know that somebody is making money off your ignorance. Pharmaceutical companies are getting richer. I can give you some very gory statistics here about how much money pharmaceutical companies are making. You understand? Some of them may be watching me because this is live. I mean, I'm, I'm going to speak this truth and we are coming after every pharmaceutical company that is milking people instead of developing technologies that can cure people. Some of them have the technology that can cure, but they don't want to cure. They want to only manage symptoms. Because if they cure, how are they going to make money off of you? They're not going to make money. You see, you can restore through your diet. Restore through rest. Through rest. You know, there's a very interesting scripture. I want everybody to open to it. Exodus 31:17. Exodus 31 17. Exodus 31 17. You can restore through rest. Exodus 31 17. I want you to look at this in your Bible. Very, very interesting. I discovered these scriptures years ago and I, I, I've never ceased to be amused by it. Exodus 31 17. He said, It is a sign between me and you and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. And what did he say, Hells? And was what? And was what? You mean God could be refreshed? God rested and God was refreshed? Wow. God rested and God was refreshed. So when you walk yourself round the clock and you fail to rest, you are violating something. You can restore through rest. You can be refreshed. If God rested, how many of you are as powerful as God? <laughs> eh? If God rested, and the Bible said God was refreshed because he rested, don't you think you can do the same thing? Restore through diet. Restore means bring your body back to where it ought to be restore through diet restore through rest restore through short-term medication develop a health goal for yourself you can tell yourself all right i'm not going to be on medication forever i'll take medi this medication for a short bit of time to jump start my system and get it back to where it ought to be are you getting what i'm saying to restart my system short-term medication Develop, be in charge of your health. Don't put your health in the hands of doctors and in the hands of physicians. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Take charge. Everybody here can read. You don't need to go to medical school to be able to understand basic things about what they are asking you to swallow. Say, swallow it two times a day. Swallow, and, and then you come back and you say, Doctor, I, I felt this. Oh, oh, really? Oh, you felt that? Because the doctor himself, when you go to him, don't you see he's looking on the computer? You think he knows everything? He's trying to find out what's wrong with you from the same computer you have in your house. From the same Google you have on your system. He's looking at it. While he's typing, you think he's typing your name. No, he's reading something. 
You understand? You say, my, my, my back, okay. Google, search, back pain. And then from there, it tells you, no, it tells you what you should do to yourself. And you just go and you are just swallowing the thing, bam, 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 bam. You don't even check to be able to read and say, what is this thing about? What exactly is this? Is this the right kind of treatment for me? Restore through short-term medication. Restore through prayer of agreement. Oh, there's power in prayer. There's power in intercessory prayer. It can uproot sicknesses and diseases. Is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them gather around him. Let them pray over him. Don't be secretive. Get two or three people that can pray the devil out. I don't want anybody to know. Somebody is going to bury you one day. And when they bury you, they bury you naked. All the things you are covering, you will be naked. They will touch everything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You see, it is, it is horrible when people are just secretive about stuff. Open up to those that can help you. Are you get what I'm saying? When you can have an intervention, restore through prayer of agreement, restore through fasting. We fast every Wednesday in the church. I don't know how many people take that seriously. But fasting has spiritual and health benefits. Did you know that the eagle... When the eagle becomes 40 years old now, the lifespan of the eagle varies. The bald eagle lives about 20 years. But there's another kind of eagle that can live, eagles can live up to 40 years. They only die maybe if they are electrocuted when they are flying or they, or they eat something that poisons their system. But eagles are very healthy. All right, especially the ones in the thick forest. But now when the eagle becomes 40 years old, it gets, you know, it gets weak. And it can't fly long distances and high altitudes as it used to be. And then because the eagle is, you know, is, an, is a bird that is an hunt bird, is an hunter, and hunts for its food fresh. So because it's now 40 years old, it can't hunt again as it used to. So what it does is that it goes to a very high mountain and it stays there for 150 days in fasting. What it does is that it removes all its beak, it knocks off the beak, and then it plucks out the talons, the feathers, plucks it out, and it becomes bare, and it regrows new beak and talons in 150 days, and you have a new eagle ready to go that's where isaiah 40 31 comes from they that wait upon the lord in fasting shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings like eagles they will run and not be weary they will walk and not faint are you hearing what i'm saying that's one of the ways to restore let me tell you something i have seen things happen in my body just by a three-day fast a three-day fast of water only what are only three days i'm telling you will do stuff inside your physical body so fasting is a very powerful l2 and please when you fast and you are trying to break your fast don't go and sit down with all those big bowls of cassava leaf and all these big food and sit down and then pollute the system again and when you do fast make sure you drink a lot of water it purges your system it's not a sin when you drink water as you fast restore through fasting restore through speaking in tongues i gotta start rounding up when you speak in tongues your body is rejuvenated the bible says speaking in tongues is a form of rest restore through patience through patience in other words give your body time to repair jesus said they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover sometimes recovery takes time don't be impatient don't say i i i prayed i didn't see anything no give your body time to recover restore through laying on of hands restore through communion when you take communion as if a doctor prescribed it it does something to your body because the communion actually is a prescription of the great physician restore through communion then finally restore by calling on the great physician he is the manufacturer of your body he created the body god has given you a wonderful body a great body your body is great oh i wish i had time to tell you about your body how many millions 
of nerves are inside your body how many miles of blood vessels how much water you have inside your body how great and how beautiful the body god has given to you it's so wonderful but many times it is the least cared for we sweep our houses and you see how many of you are cleaning your house and mopping and cleaning but many times we don't take care of this body many times we don't clean the body many times we don't watch the things that can cause the body to break down a lot of times we don't pay attention you wash your clothes but have you ever cared about what goes on inside your physical body let me tell you something you can have great dreams you can have big goals for yourself if you are sick that is the end of your goals have you not seen people on the hospital bed they say oh i wish i can get out of here i wish i can have another chance i wish i can have another chance if you are trifling with your health just go to the hospital just go to the hospital just watch people and then you see that you you learn how to take your health more seriously and more importantly you can call on the great physician you remember what he said he said in jeremiah 17 uh, jeremiah 17 14 jeremiah cried out to him he said heal me O lord and i shall be healed save me and i shall be saved for thou art my praise if you call upon him he can heal you he can heal you right now remember your gp did not make your body he made it the great physician made it he created it psalm 6 verse 2 the psalmist said have mercy upon me O lord for i am weak oh lord heal me for my bones are vexed second chronicles chapter 16 verse 12 the bible talks about a king king asa in the 39th year of his reign the bible said he was diseased in his feet he was sick in his feet and his disease was very great yet in his disease he did not seek the lord but he saw to the physicians and unfortunately he died if you seek the great physician you can be healed blind Bartimaeus cried he said lord that i may see i want to see i want i want to see in other words said, great physician these eyes you gave me are no longer working make it work make is there something that's no longer working in your body the great physician can make it work say so will you fix it these kidneys you gave me are no longer functioning can you replace them oh great physician and look at what he said in jeremiah 32 verse 27 he said behold i am the lord the god of all flesh is there anything too hard for me there's nothing too hard for the great physician i want you to believe him i want you to trust him trust your health to his hands and believe that another day you will never be sick again I've shown you what to do if you have symptoms in your body. You deal with it by research, by rebuke, and by restoring. Glory to Jesus. Rise on your feet. Glory to Jesus. This is all we have time for today. Rise on your feet as we pray together. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah there is power mighty in the blood there is power mighty in the blood there is power mighty in the blood of jesus christ there is power mighty in the blood lift your two hands to heaven i want you to pray with me right now glory to jesus if you notice that there's any area of your life where you know you open the door to symptoms as we as we share the word of god today i wanted to pray about it i wanted to say lord in the name of jesus i saw that in this area i opened the door i opened the door i opened the door forgive me in the name of jesus christ and restore me can you open your mouth and pray like that can you open your mouth and pray like that ask god to forgive you any area of your life where you open the door to the symptoms in the name of jesus christ can you open your mouth right now open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray right now in the name of jesus christ any area of your life where you open the door 
Any area of your life where you open the door, open your mouth right now and pray. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth and pray. Shaga bala ba 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 of the bolsa. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Re ba 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 zatama. Van ro jabalando zabalando zabalando jabarando zebra mother. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Father, have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus Christ. Any area of my life where I open the door to symptoms in my body. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Any area where I violated my body, where I misused my body, where I was reckless, uh, where I opened the door to fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Father, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to encourage you as you leave this place, continue to research and research and research. Now, I want you to pray right now. Look at someone. Look at someone and tell them, say, do you know I cannot be sick? Because Jesus took my sickness. Please go and tell somebody else. Say, do you know I cannot be sick? Jesus took my sickness. Tell someone else. Say, do you, do you know, are you aware that I cannot be sick? Say, I cannot be sick. Say, it's impossible. Look at someone. Look at someone. Look at someone highball to highball and tell them, say, listen, I cannot be sick. Tell them, say, I cannot be sick. Say, Jesus took my sickness. Look at somebody else. Look at somebody else and tell them. I bought to high ball. Say, I cannot be sick. Say, Jesus took my sickness. Look at someone else and tell them. Say, I cannot be sick. Jesus took my sickness. On the cross of Calvary. Say, he took it. So I don't have it. Does that make sense? Can you believe God's word? Let me ask you this question. How many of you know the last name? How many of you have a GP? Okay. How many of you know the last name of your GP? Okay. Good. How many of you know where your GP lives? Okay. That's good. How many of you have ever seen the certificate from medical school of your GP? His degree, his certificate. You've seen it. You saw it in his office. How many of you have ever met any of his classmates to ascertain and verify whether he really went to medical school? How many of you know your GP's wife or husband? How many of you know his children? How many of you have seen his birth certificate before to know whether that is his real name? Yet, the man is prescribing medications that can determine whether you die or live. And you are swallowing it without questioning. You can believe the word of God. You can be, if you can believe a man, you can believe the great physician. Amen. I said amen. The great physician said, I took your infirmities. Listen, I'm telling you what I live by. I don't, my wife knows. Sometimes I can be groaning in pain. I'm be groaning. And she said, what's wrong with you? And I'm saying, oh, this pain. But I'll be saying at the same time, I cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. I cannot, I keep declaring, I don't care what, I cannot be sick. I love to do that. I cannot be sick. I refuse to be sick. I would, I would wake up with pain and I will tell the devil, devil, you know I can't be sick. You know, right? I said, devil, you know you are just wasting your time. I can't be sick. I can't be sick. I refuse to be sick because the Bible said, it took my infirmities. And I believe he took it. When the Bible said he took it, I believe he took it. Do you believe he took it? Ask somebody beside you, do you believe he took it? Then you don't have it. Okay, you don't have it. Now, you, are, you will deal with symptoms right now. Lift your right hand to heaven. Say, every symptom in my body. Say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Say, I resist you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray for the next 45 seconds.
Let me hear you praying. Come on. Let me hear you praying. The next 45 seconds. Open your mouth. Every symptom in my body, I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth. Every symptom in my body, I rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. 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 Every symptom, every symptom in my body, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Manda Raba Gazata la Baba Bujaka Baza. Mazata Lima Baba Bozab da Babu Shikaba. Jagabala Babu Zab da Babu Shagapa Mazataba. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every symptom in my body, I bind you now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. The word of God says, resist the devil and he will turn and run away from you. He will turn and run away from you. It will turn and run away from you. Everything you have rebuked this morning, it turns around and it runs away from you in the name of Jesus. I speak over your life, you will spend your days in health in the name of Jesus Christ. How many of you believe that in 20 years time, you will be stronger than you are today? Come on, let me hear you shout it loud. Amen. How many of you believe that in 30 years time you'll be stronger than you are today? Let me hear you say amen. Someone say, I refuse to be sick. Say it again. Say, I refuse to be sick. Say, devil, you cannot put sickness on me. Because Jesus took it from me. In the name of Jesus. Stretch your hands this way and let me pray for you. Father, I thank you because you are the Lord that heals us. I'm praying right now for your healing virtue to flow over everyone that is standing here today. That they will be healed from the top of their head to the soles of their feet in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you to pray in one minute. Everybody pray with me. Say, oh great physician, heal my body now. You are the maker of this body. You are the manufacturer of this body. Heal my body now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Call upon the great physician. Call upon him. He's the great physician. He's the great physician. He's the great physician. Call upon him now. In the name of Jesus. Mandarabaka Zataba. Jamalanda baka zabda baba shagaba. Oh, great physician. Oh, great physician. Zalobon rabaka zataba. I call upon you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. How many parents here? Rejoice when you, see, when you see your children in pain. How many of you celebrate when you see your children in pain? Your heavenly father doesn't want you to be in pain. I decree in the name of Jesus. Anyone here that is managing pain. As you say this believing amen. Let that pain disappear in the name of Jesus. I command you Satan. Take your hands off now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let recovery begin. Let recovery begin. Let restoration 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 begin. In the name of Jesus. God gave the woman the uterus so she can conceive. It's not a decoration. Whatever is blocking anyone's uterus here, every blockages, 
every hormonal imbalances and those that are watching me online in the name that is above every name great physician i call upon you now that you will do your work oh god 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 let blockages be removed let fibroids melt let tumors dematerialize every deaf ears be opened every blind eyes be opened i command let the cripples walk in the mighty name of jesus let arthritis go in the name of jesus every degenerative disease every autoimmune disease i command it to go in the name of jesus every mental condition every mental health issues every chemical imbalances i command be resolved in the name of jesus be resolved in the name of jesus lift your two hands to heaven i want you to scream out loud great physician touch my body now oh great physician touch my body now oh great physician touch my body now in the name of jesus father i give you praise father i give you glory oh i just sense the anointing of god in this place i just sense the glory of god in this place just open your mouth just worship him just worship him it took your sickness it took your infirmity maybe the devil has even been showing you that you're going to die and the devil is is showing you all kinds of scary pictures all oh, the blood of jesus wipes it off right now oh father from wherever nation i'm being viewed from wherever country of the world i've been viewed let your power go forth right now let your healing virtue go forth right now let healings break forth right now in the name of jesus christ Oh, rather back as it. Oh, shut up and the liga bubbles of Toboza. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Please just give me a, just give me a couple more minutes. Just give me a couple more minutes. I know we're supposed to have stopped now. Just give me a couple more minutes. Let the Lord do his work. Let the Lord do his work. Let the Lord do his work. Oh, let the Lord do his work. Do your work in me. You are my God. Do your work in me. You are my God. Oh, do your work in me. You are my God. Oh, do your work in me. You are my God. Oh, do your work in me. You are my God. Oh, do your work in me. You are my Three more times. Oh, do your work in me. You are my God. Oh, do your work in me. You are my great physician. Do your work in me. You are my great physician. Do your work in me. You are my hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus name put your hands together for the Lord hallelujah glory to God amen 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 look at someone and say I see a new you I see a new you praise God hallelujah thank you Jesus all right now um, we're going to we're going to worship God with our offering and our tithes you know real quick and then after that I'm going to come back bring us some um, very important announcement uh, our upcoming event and um, and then we'll bring the service to a close glory to Jesus can I ask minister Derek to come and pray 
over the offering and the tithes. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, prepare your offering and tithe. Uh, uh, stand up. Let's stand up. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. We thank you for your word. We thank you for our provision. We thank you for the divine help you are giving to us. That by the stripes of Jesus Christ of the cross of Calvary, we are made whole. Abba Father, we thank you for the gathering of your people. Oh, we, we pray over the tithe and offering of your people that you will bless in the mighty name of Jesus. You said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, press down, shake it together, so I may give unto your bosom. You said, as many that give their office are tight, you will remove the virus from their lives and from their uh, finances in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift all the people of God here this afternoon to your hand, that your blessings will be upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the offerings of your people as they give Oh, you will bless them in abundance in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your countenance continue to shine upon them day and night. Sicknesses and diseases and oppression of the enemy will not come near them in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, divine head of God, spirit of love, abundant life of God, of Christ will be upon each and every one today and forevermore in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the word of God says the devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus comes to, in order to give life and to give it more abundantly. I pray that as many that are giving their tithes and offering today, and even those that are here that are not able to give, you will bless them. You will give them spirit of love, abundant life in the mighty name of Jesus. Greater provision you will provide for your people in the mighty name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord, the peace of God, the restoration of the good things of God will be upon your people. In Jesus Christ, mighty name we pray. Amen. God, you are so good. God, you are kind. God, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. God, you are so good. God, you are kind. God, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent is your name. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. God, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent is your name. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. God, you are wonderful. My God, you are God, you are so good. God, you are so good. God, you are kind. God, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent is your name. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. God, you are wonderful. My God, excellent is your name. Excellent is your name. Excellent is your power. God, you are wonderful. My God, you are everyone and especially all our online audience we appreciate you want to want to uh, thank god for your lives and beseech you to to help us to share and share and share this broadcast so more people can benefit from it now july 1 to 7 we are going to have um, a time of fasting and praying it's tagged accelerate and flourish so we are going into the second half of the year and um, we want to unlock that with the time of um, renewal 
um, as we wait upon the Lord and fast and pray. And I, I did touch a little bit on fasting today, so I encourage you to participate. You understand? Drink lots of water. You know, watch what you eat. Glory to God. Um, so, every day, um, 5 p.m., it starts on, on July 1st, which is Wednesday. And um, 5 p.m. daily, um, you know, Wednesday is our regular day of fasting and prayer. So, we kick off that day and then we go every day, you know, 5 p.m., you know, praying, waiting upon God, you know, getting God's word and preparing ourselves. A lot has happened in the first half of 2020. Um, unprecedented losses, um, people who lost family members, people lost jobs, who lost money. But, you know, the second half of the year, you can recover. Glory to God, isn't it? And you can accelerate. And not only accelerate, you can flourish. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, make sure you are part of that. Hallelujah. And you'll be blessed for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Let's give thanks to the Lord today. Let's appreciate him for his blessing and for all he's done. Thank him for his word. You have received the word of God today. That is your inheritance. That is your portion. Thank God for the word of God today. And pray that you'll be able to apply the word in your life in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for your word. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you say thank you, Lord Jesus? Wave your hands to him. Wave your hands to him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Gratitude. Gratitude will take you very far. Gratitude will take you to new altitudes. Lift your hands. Wave it to him. Thank him. Appreciate him. Say thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I can lift my hands. I'm grateful that I'm alive. I'm grateful that I can speak. I'm grateful that I can stand. I'm grateful, oh God. I'm grateful for the good health that you give to me. I'm grateful for your merciful over my life. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now say these words after me. Say in the name of Jesus. As I go forth this week. I declare that the lines are falling to me in pleasant places in the name of Jesus Christ. I refuse to participate in evil. I refuse to participate in disaster. It is not my portion. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we, are pray, we pray this morning, this afternoon for Victoria that every surge of the coronavirus new cases be stilled in the name of Jesus Christ. And we secure the borders and perimeters of New South Wales that in the name of Jesus, the pandemic will not come here. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, are you blessed today? Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. You can put your hands together for Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now let's sing our song before we go. Look at somebody and tell them and say, be blessed. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever. Be blessed wherever. This life leads you. This life leads you. Let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. Let me speak life to you. Let me speak life to you. You can depend on me. You can depend on me to pray for you. To pray for you. You can depend on God. You can depend on God to see you through. To see you through. Now, sing it to somebody else. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever. Be blessed wherever. This life leads you. This life leads you. Let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. Let me speak life to you. Let me speak life to you. 
You can depend on me. You can depend on me to pray for you. To pray for you. You can depend on God. You can depend on God to see you through. To see you through. Let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week.